Imagine having the chance to do what you want to do in life, to do what you love to do in life, to pursue your dream, but having fear hold you back. Imagine that. Well, that's what happened to us, to me, to my family. This is my family for context. Identical twins, Ava and Alexis, they're now five. They're the two people who look like each other. <laughs> my son, Jersey, he's adorable. My wife, Aminat, Ami. And I'm the guy who looks like me, okay? <clears throat> this is our family. For context, at this point, we have about five million um, followers throughout social media, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, etc. But it didn't, it didn't all start that way. How did it start? Well, a few years ago, we had a mega viral video. We were, not, we were not even trying. This viral video came out of nowhere. We were trying to document our twins' lives. And then we made a video where they realized that they're identical twins. And in that video, there were these adorable moments where Alexis, who's one minute younger, realized she's younger and she got upset because she wanted to be older. I want to grow. I want to be one minute older. My life is devastated. I'm a three year old. Oh my gosh, what's going to happen to me? But then at the end of the video, and it's a short video, Ava, who remember is one minute older, realized she's a little bit shorter than Alexis. So guess who cried and lost it? Ava got upset because she wanted to grow. I want to grow. That was the line. I want to grow. I want to grow. That video, we essentially had no followers, you know, less than 10,000. We, we were not even trying. The next day, we were on the Today Show. That's how it worked. The next week, we were on Good Morning America. We did that whole thing. It was an amazing thing where you just kind of refresh your phone and like, what's going on with, with my life at this moment, right? So for context, let's talk about the mountain, the proverbial mountain. Over here are uh, YouTube views. So if you look on the left-hand side, um, <laughs> we had a YouTube, there was no views literally. And then all of a sudden we had this video and then boom, you have a big spike and then people are interested. People are coming to your YouTube. They're trying to figure out you know, uh, who you are, what you're about. They're subscribing, they're watching your videos. It goes up, 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 up. And then if you look over there on the green part, it's down because a viral video is good for about five days and then people find something else to do, right? Can you guys agree with that? Something's viral is exciting, then five days later you forget all about these people, right? Well, same thing here. The real work has just begun in that moment and what I want to talk to you about is about what we went through and what I went through as a man and as a person to try to pursue what I really wanted to do in life, which is be a creative. I had a day job at the time. I was, I was doing both, th both things making our content, trying to build our social media, learning about it. I didn't know much about it and still having a day job. So my wife and I, like I said, both had day jobs. Our day jobs were not to sit around and cuddle like this. We actually had day jobs. This is just a picture. I don't know why I picked that picture. So was I willing to put in the work that it took to do what I loved? I had motivations. Motivations were to spend more time with my family and preserve special moments. That's essentially how we got started on social media, making little videos of our kids and like documenting these moments so that they could live forever. And then when they're older, they could show their kids or grandkids, etc. right? I wanted to be a creative and do things I loved. Be a storyteller, a photographer, a filmmaker. And my last motivation was I wanted to be an entre entrepreneur. I wanted to work for myself. I did not want to work for somebody else. Some of you might have some of those same inspirations. With this job, because a lot of people are curious about it, I will tell you that you, know, you have to be good at many things. Some people tell us, like, oh, you got adorable kids. That's great. I want to do what you do. It's, almost, it's insulting. It's so, it's so hard. You have to be good at so many things. And that's why I guess a lot of people don't try or they give up because it is very difficult. I first had to learn how to create very good content that resonated with people that made them feel something that they wanted to watch and share it. So I set out to be a very good or good storyteller. And I say this with humility because in the beginning I definitely was not and I've gotten better at it because of the inculcation of doing something so many times. If you look here on the left hand side there's three cameras or what it takes a crew of seven or eight people to do I typically do by myself. You have to learn to be efficient. So I learned how to do these things. I'm climbing the mountain. On the right hand side I'm doing uh, another video. 
I had to learn how to edit and tell compelling stories and, and, and learn all these different softwares and things. I've always been a photographer. I've always loved that. I had to really amp up my game to really have great images that really that people really, really loved. On the left is my wife, and on the right are my daughters now, Ava and Alexis. Because what I feel about social media, it can be a very deleterious place. It can be a very negative place. If you choose to resonate with that, or if you choose to make that type of content, we try to, make, we try to be the Cadillac of uh, social media, if you know what I'm saying, right? Because we can choose whatever we put out there. You gotta be good at graphic design, which I didn't know anything about. I had to learn all this stuff. On the, on the top are less compelling images from a movie, from a steal of a video, and on the bottom are more compelling videos or graphic design that I've made so that people might wanna watch these videos. The point of all this is you have to be good at all these different things and you have to know how to market these things. You're making the content, and then how do you market it so that people wanna watch it? So picture me climbing this mountain with a day job, trying to learn all these things while going to a job nine to five. As I'm starting to do these things, and we're starting to get views, and people are starting to connect with us, and after the viral video goes away, people are coming back because they're like, oh, these, th this family is creating good content that I like. We started working with brands, you know, Disney, Google, Crest. Um, and the way this business works is that's how, years ago, somebody might buy something through a commercial they, they saw on a TV show. Now, what brands are doing, they're finding influencers like our family, and they're using our influence to maybe have somebody purchase that product. If your influence is good and positive, then you get to work with good brands. Brands that, that, that see resonance in what you're doing. And remember, once again, all of this with a day job. All of this with a day job. I'm editing all through the night, and I'm going to my day job, but I'm climbing that mountain, right? That's the theme here, I'm climbing that mountain. At some, at some point, I had to make a choice. Was I gonna pursue this dream, which was starting to work out, but very inconsistently? You know, you don't have a, a paycheck every two weeks. You don't have that. YouTube doesn't owe you income. Facebook doesn't owe you income. You, you have to be self-motivated. Had to make a choice. And then one day, after about two years of um, working, I don't know how many hours, you know, I'm exhausted at this point even thinking about it, having the day job, um, making four videos a week that are 10 minutes long, doing photography, doing all the other things that are required with this. We got a really good deal with Facebook, and I told my wife, I said, you know, I think I should just you know, put in my notice. And then the next day, I went into my job. I was working at a big law firm in New York City. It's a very good job. They laid me off on the same day I was gonna quit. <laughs> True story. And you know it's never a good, uh, I got a phone call in my office, like, Justin, can you come see us? And it was the HR lady. I'm like, oh, this is, this is not gonna be good. No, the HR lady calls you in, it's not gonna be good, right? So I, I go in, I see my boss there, they have the paperwork there, I'm like, I, I, know, I know what's happening right here, what's going on right here. And they went through this thing, Justin, you're so valuable, this and that, this and that, but we're gonna let you off. And I just, I said, well, I was gonna quit today, so, uh, I think I went here because they gave me like a severance package and like we all hugged it out and I was like I was just gonna do this thing because Facebook Had a new program called Facebook watch which is like their Netflix and they signed us to a deal because you know what Facebook said They called us and they said we like the videos you make we love the positive Vibes you have we love the life lessons that you have with your kids and I'm like that's what it's all about that's what we do. And Facebook recognized it, and they offered us essentially five times what I was making at my day job for a year of videos. All, we had to make a video every Friday, and, we had, and they were going to help us grow and all this amazing stuff. That was essentially the end of, of the mountain, or the bottom of the mountain, or the top of the what, what part of the mountain is that? I don't know. There's a lot of mountains here. <laughs> the peak. Thank you, sir. I needed him to tell me this. Everyone knows hard work pays off, but I wanted to tell you the story because there also has been a lot of intrigue when I know people like, how did you get to this point? You had a day job and like, how did you get to this point? You know, we have over 100 million views across uh, Facebook and uh, YouTube. Um, we still have our show on Facebook. 
We make content centered around our family, centered around our kids. It's all positive, um, family-friendly content. These are all videos with well over a million views. And that's something that uh, I'm not arrogant about, I'm very humble about, but I'm very proud of. There's so much work that has gone into to these stories. We are a 2017 Forbes top influencer, and I say that very proudly again, because in the age where there's a lot of promotion of things on YouTube and other places where it's dramatic and you're exposing the negative, we're positive, and, and, and we got this accolade. And that made me feel so good. It made me know that I'm in the right place. The mountain was worth the climb because it allowed me to do exactly what I want to do with my life. And there's nothing special about me, but there is something special about what I did. But everyone can do that. But it hasn't stopped. I'm still doing it. I'm here now. I got up this morning at 6 a.m. to edit our YouTube video. If you go on YouTube today, McClure Twins Family, it's called uh, Twins Babysit Twin Cousins. I created that this morning, and I'm here gladly giving this talk. So hard work trumps all. In the end, we're trying to create the brand that our kids will love, because one day I will not be here on this earth. And this is what gets me a bit emotional, because I have kids that I love. One day I, will be, um, I won't be here, but these videos will live forever. And that is why I had the biggest motivation to do this. The top video, my kids were staring at special needs kids. I said, you don't stare at anyone. Let's start working with special needs kids. We, we did 10 videos with various special needs kids bringing awareness, cerebral palsy, Down syndrome, all kinds of different things. And now my kids are not scared of anybody with special needs. Our marriage is hard when crying is a good thing. My kids, I felt, had, had an abundance of toys, too many. I said, we're going to give those away. They cried a lot. I said, you can cry. We're still going to give them away. And you're going to learn a lesson. And the lesson is you give to others. Our friend Noah needs a new heart. Um, last year, this little guy needed a heart. We, we raised $50,000 with this video. A lot of videos now, they want to promote kids falling off a bike. Nobody loves a video with a kid learning to ride a bike. We're trying to do those videos. Because in the end, you win when you make people feel something. Every piece of content that we make on social media makes the world better or worse. There are no idle thoughts. Thank you very much.